And that's getting to the butterfly, where I can actually show some more of the effects. If that's okay, so this is something that you've mentioned before, is, is using, uh, using the butterfly as an example of, of this, because we've seen some fantastic images and we've heard a little bit about how it works. But in some ways it's kind of hard to, to visualise what this effect actually looks like. Um, you've actually got a, a butterfly wing that we can have a look at. Yes. So, so if we pop that under the visualiser. So if I show you um, a butterfly wing and my attempts to recreate the colour. So we've got here, hang on, technology, trying to zoom in, but it's kind of working, yes. Okay, so we're coming closer to the wing. Okay, so I'm just, if I move that around, you can actually see, obviously, it's very light dependent on how it catches the surface. That's a morpho, a very, very bright butterfly and very hard <laughs> to mimic. The best I've managed to do, we've got here, um, is if I try and zoom out a little bit, I think I've... Uh, there we go. Yeah, it's coming, it's coming. Okay, so um, if I move that again, you probably can see it also from when you're looking at it now. There's very little color. If you're looking actually on at the painting from this angle here, so if I move it around, it, it changes. And it's very, very bright. Going into maybe this one. Here. This is again a morpho butterfly. I can't see the specimen though. Okay. Um, same principle, same color exactly, but different background. So the blue is still there, but you can st see what's underneath here. That's the butterfly. I've been trying to recreate this effect. Um, it's okay, I've got the... Here. So where actually you can see what's underlying underneath the, the paint. And as you shift, sometimes the image completely disappears because the uh, reflection drowns it out and then what lies underneath reappears. So it's very ephemeral color and that does interest me. It's got a dynamic, dynamics to it that pigments just simply don't have. Yeah? Andrew, with, so with the butterfly, can you tell us a little bit more about why it has this color and, and how it creates it? Yes, well, it's almost like uh, a, a, the, the example we looked at earlier, where you have a stack of thin films or a stack of soap bubbles. Um, in this case, they have quite a complicated architecture, but essentially it's the same uh, mechanism in play. So when light strikes it from one direction, it will reflect a certain wavelength, and when light changes direction, it reflects another wavelength. So we see those different wavelengths of different colors. So in other words, as we move around the butterfly or as the light moves around the butterfly, we see a whole spectrum. We pass through a spectrum of colors. Sometimes, though, they can have um, other structures there to just capture a single wavelength or to reflect a single wavelength into all directions, such as the, these butterflies, whereas they only reflect the blue part of the spectrum. Um, but the, when they... When they stop reflecting, the color disappears completely. There's nothing left. Whereas in a pigment, such as we find in our clothes, the light comes in, it doesn't matter from what angle, and it reflects the same wavelength into every direction. It eats up all the other wavelengths, which it turns into heat, and reflects all the other wavelengths equally into every direction. So no matter where we're looking from, we see the same color. Okay, so that's sort of why we get this in really intense flash of one particular color that's in, right in so case. so in these which are structural colors all the energy in the incident light in the incoming sunlight for example is concentrated into a single direction so when you're looking in that direction you see a very bright um, visual effect going back then to, to, the, you know, to the butterfly in particular why would it want to do that what's the advantage of doing that it can, well, in some cases it can actually be camouflage. Uh, where they are silver, especially a butterfly chrysalis, which doesn't want to be seen by birds, um, it has a silver surface and it exists within the, within the leaves of a forest canopy. Now, any predator looking at that chrysalis, it's looking at essentially a mirror, a mirrored surface, and it sees only the reflection of leaves. So it can be looking right at the chrysalis, but doesn't see it at all. But in the case of the morphos, it's to produce a quite um, stunning visual flash. This can be to attract a mate 
or it can be actually to confuse a predator. Uh, if a predator is about to attack something and it produces a very bright flash to, to sort of uh, drown out its visual system, it allows the butterfly a few seconds to escape while the, the predator is, is temporarily stunned. And, and these are, um, in the wild, these are particularly effective. We, we can see morpho butterflies from over a mile's distance because, because of this blue color. Um, yet it's evolved from a completely transparent scale. Uh, and those butterflies are totally invisible. Lord, okay, so that's sort of a fantastic. It must be amazing to actually see out in the wild. Do we have any questions at this point? At the front? I was just wondering whether there are any chemicals which actually help to um, help the butterfly to look or change that colour. Uh, the, the chemicals are, are the pigments in the background. So as Francesca showed, two uh, morpho butterflies there, one was particularly bright in the blue and the other was less effective. Now the reason the one was mo more bright is because it has a black background of chemical pigments and that serves to absorb any of the light that isn't reflected. Now if you take away that layer and have a white reflecting layer below it, then okay, the structure will reflect the blue wavelengths, but the light that not reflected passes through and is then back reflected by the background to sort of drown, drown out that colour or weaken it. Um, in fact, there's a good case of that with um, a mimic, uh, sorry, the blue-ringed octopus, which is a, a particularly deadly species. When it's aggressive, lots of blue rings, electric blue rings, light up around its body, um, and this acts as a warning colour. That blue is actually there all the time. What changes is just the background. It has chromatophores, cells that contain black mm. pigment, and when it becomes aggressive, those cells expand. So what was then once a white background now becomes a black one. And this makes the blue appear particularly bright. Yeah, basically, I'll just to illustrate this. Um, that's the same, pig not pigment, structure. This has got black underneath. This has obviously got a much uh, more whitish, uh, browny color underneath. Two different, entirely different um, effects. Okay, and if you want to have a closer look at that, please feel free to come up afterwards. As we can see, there's so much to hear about during this uh, event. How many colours are possible to have in this, in this way? How many different kinds of colours? Yeah, um, actually it's growing, but um, in, the in the last decade, more and more pigments have evo uh, evolved, um, structural pigments, iridescent pigments in hyphens. Um, it's very much an evolving field and uh, industry is, is developing it and as, as it progresses my project is becoming much more viable. I am having quite a number of different uh, materials to choose from now. Also I'm studying ways of uh, um, creating new colors. There are, it is much, it's quite complicated but there is a, it is possible um, via layering and very specific combinations with transparent dyes to create some new colors. Not straightforward, quite different from chemical pigments. Therefore, we are actually researching into this and in order to, to actually um, get a much vaster palette, um, that's why we are looking at butterflies and we're looking at how do they combine chemical pigments and structural colors to create all the range of uh, color effects that they, they display and um, texture is also very important as I've said before.